What's up party people and welcome back to my channel. So today we're doing a wear test and a review of the brand new e.l.f. Camo Hydrating CC Cream. So this is an extension, a little sister to the original CC Cream, which I actually did not like. I'm a skeptic, okay? I'm a, I'm a little skeptical, but I, I have higher hopes. But yeah, I have normal acne prone skin. I am pretty active today. So we're really gonna test the full coverage claim. And yeah, you guys wanna see an all day wear test and an honest review, then keep on watching. So this is $15 wherever you find it. So it's available on the e.l.f. website obviously at Ulta so they have 30 shades total which I feel like is pretty good especially for a CC cream normally you don't see that many in a CC cream let alone a foundation and it looks like it goes pretty fair and pretty dark I could be wrong or I'm just looking at the swatches online which can be kind of deceiving and sometimes they get doctored up so you never really can tell it says a full coverage color correcting foundation that hydrates and gives skin a dewy finish with SPF 30 it says it helps plump skin's appearance it contains vitamin b5 which they say helps moisture and nourish the skin. Tremella mushroom, which I'm not really familiar with. Hyaluronic acid. You know what? We've got all the resources in the world. So let's look up what Tremella mushroom is. All right, this is interesting. So they actually say that in research, Tremella mushroom has shown to have better moisture retention than hyaluronic acid as it holds more weight in water. It says it's been found to increase type one collagen, which is by far the most abundant type of collagen in the body. I highly doubt that the concentration in a foundation for your face is actually gonna do a whole lot. I feel like that's kind of superficial. It also has anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. All good things. I feel like Tremella mushrooms not really something we see a whole lot, so seems pretty cool. But yeah, it says it's gonna be great for dry, oily, and combination skin. Um, drop so combination skin pretty much yeah I got two shades I got 240W which is a warm golden undertone which I think will probably be my closest match but I also got the shade 205N which they say is a neutral olive undertone which olive undertones across the board are very hard to come by but I don't have any primer on the only thing I've done is skin prep so I've got like moisturizers serum stuff like that so there is light 240W so it doesn't really have a lot of drip or wateriness to it but it's also not super thick and moussey and then here is 205N. So honestly, that may work okay for me. So let's start with 205N right here. Okay, that's actually not as light as I thought it was gonna be. So yeah, there's 205N and 240W. Actually, let's just let it sit there for a few minutes and let's just see if it oxidizes any. You know what? I'm not even gonna sit here for very long because um, they are oxidizing and darkening just a little bit, especially this one back here. Going into 205N, let's go ahead and start back here where I had the most to cover up. Okay, so coverage wise, I am pretty pleasantly surprised that it's already pretty full coverage. But yeah, blend is very nice on this. It does sink right in, no brush strokes, no like stippling strokes, nothing like that. It's just meshing right into the skin and it does have a really nice satin dewy kind of finish. So gonna pump out some more and go into the flat side of this sponge. Same thing starting down here where I had the most cover up. It definitely sheared it out quite a bit with the sponge, but if you build it up, it seems like it gets pretty close. I actually may go back in with the brush on this side. The undertone is kind of weird. Like it's kind of olivey, but it's also got like a little bit of like peachiness to it, which not sure why that would be in there. Maybe that's just oxidation once it hits the skin, I'm not sure. Just keep in mind that just because a company says that a foundation or a concealer or something is a certain undertone, like they could be wrong. I've seen so many foundations from like big name companies that claim to be golden or neutral or cool or whatever. And it's like, do you guys not have experts on your teams? Like, do you guys not have professionals helping you out? Or I see different things. And I think we've been proven time and time again that sometimes the testing, sometimes the quality control, not there. Yeah, no blending issues. It's not like it took longer to blend out. I don't really feel like it soaked up a ton of coverage, but it definitely did soak up some. So let's see, I've been sitting here for a while now. So let's go ahead and go into a second pump. And I just wanna see what it does over my blemishes. So especially like right through here where they're very irritated because I have no self-control. Yeah, it's not really building up coverage a whole lot. It's kind of plateaued a little bit. Yeah, I don't think it's a very buildable kind of formula. But yeah, here's what it looks like from side to side. So again, I feel like I'm gonna keep saying the same things. <laughs> I apologize for being redundant, but it just looks very juicy, very hydrated, very plump. My skin looking plump is not something that I see with a lot of foundations with the majority of them, honestly. And I love how glassy and sheeny my skin looks. It's not really doing anything for me in terms of my pores. Like it's not blurring my skin. But so far I feel like all the qualities are actually living up to the claims. So 
so far so good. I will say one concern of mine is that where it's so hydrated and dewy, like it's pretty transferable that it'll just end up on everything or it'll just make my face feel kind of heavy throughout the day, but it is 3.55. I'm gonna round down and say 3.50 because I've been sitting here for at least five minutes. All right, guys, full face done and everything that I used is gonna be in the description box below in a full on detailed makeup breakdown. And I do wanna mention that I did only use products that I trust, like products that I know wear well. So if something goes south, it's not the other products, it's the foundation. But I was so pleasantly surprised with the blend of everything on top of this. Even using powders on a very tacky, dewy kind of base had no issues. I actually did film myself powdering just so you could see where I was going. I did my T-zone, under eyes, and then pretty much everywhere but my cheek area. So I did set my acne along through here, like along my jawline, um, just because I don't like my acne to be shiny because the eyes gonna be drawn to that. So I did tap over any blemish with a little bit of setting powder. But overall, I still feel very glowy and dewy like I don't really feel like the powder knocked out too much of the shine and glow but I will say even after powdering I still feel kind of tacky like whenever I touch my fingers to my skin there is transfer so I'm not sure how I would lock this in the summertime when it's really hot and humid or I'm sweating it feels like it's gonna be one of those foundations that is gonna get kind of sticky if it's humid and hot outside so it may be best for the winter time we'll see if it actually holds up so I'll see you guys in what's up thingadings it is now 11:30 at night our check-in time was 350 so we're about to hit the eight hour mark and I'm actually going to show you the time once we get done talking because I know for sure we will surpass the eight hour mark once I'm done so there are definitely pros and cons to this so let's start with the pros so first things first I feel like this looks phenomenal on camera like in on the viewfinder it looks so smooth and airbrushed and just supple and juicy um, like I don't really see the flaws I see in person on my viewfinder Finder. It has maintained a glowy finish all day long and coverage wise I've not really lost a lot like I don't really see a lot of fading now Please ignore the fact that I've got this little red bump right here and right there because I did I got a little OCD again, okay? Like I had a little, like I, I couldn't stand it. Again, do as I say, not as I do. Don't pick your pimples. <laughs> it makes things worse. But I see very minimal fading. Like I feel like my acne is still mostly covered up. Again, it's not right here because I picked at it, but everywhere else it's pretty covered up and my cheek products are still going very, very strong. They're still going super intense, which is something that usually is, it's not very common for me. I don't see any major settling into pores or fine lines, like no major creasing or anything. Now for the cons. I am pretty shiny overall. It's kind of crossed that line from being glowy and dewy into greasy territory. It's not even just my T-zone. Like I definitely see a lot of oil buildup right here in the crevices of my nose, but it's also just kind of everywhere. There are a few areas on my face where it looks a little bit powdery. I guess pretty much just on my nose, my chin, and in between my eyebrows, like in my little 11 mark area. And it does look a tad bit powdery, I guess. Like when you look up close, like really, really close to my blemishes, I mean, I put powder on scabby blemishes so it's gonna be happening a little bit and keep in mind I've only tested this foundation one time today which means I've only tested this with one group of products so I may use a different setting powder tomorrow and not see that issue so I've not tested all the variables to know if that's something that will happen across the board and also it's not the most comfortable feeling foundation after about the six hour mark like I, I noticed about two hours ago that it started feeling more heavy and just kind of suffocating I'm a sensory kind of person like I'm someone that you know if I've got a foundation that feels kind of heavy like I'm constantly thinking about it like I'm constantly thinking about removing it and just you know taking everything off like it just feels like a lot on my skin and I want it off so I'm kind of on the fence about it to be honest like I'm not as excited as I was when I first got done but I'm also not super disappointed I need to test this with different combinations of products and you know really figure out what works best with it before I say this is an absolute no-go because at this point I don't think that I think that for dry mature skin for sure you are gonna love this like I think that this is gonna give you a lot of hydration and moisture and that really juicy supple plump look that a lot of foundations I've tried don't really give me however I think that claiming this is gonna be good for oily skin is a major letdown on elf's part because I think that if anything this is a complete no-go for oily skin honestly I think this might be one for me anyway that I'll probably get more enjoyment from mixing it into other foundations like foundations that are you know maybe more on the natural satin finish side I feel like when you combine foundations with different characteristics it just gives you a really pretty effect um, and they're 
there may be something that you don't like about one foundation that in conjunction with another, it just brings out the best. But stay tuned because I will 100% talk about this in the future in an updates video. I actually started doing a new series on my channel where I come back and update you on products I've talked about. You know, do I still use it? Do I like it? Do I hate it? Do I return it? Um, I'll put the, the first video of the series up here so you can check that out and just kind of get a vibe for what kind of style it's going to be. Make sure you subscribe and turn your notification bell on and we will talk about this again in the future. By the way, little time check. It is now 1154. So as predicted, we just surpassed the eight hour mark. But yeah. If you guys enjoyed the video and found it helpful, then give us a big old thumbs up. Here's a couple more things for you to check out next. So just venture around, make yourself at home and I will see you guys in the next one. Mwah.